Okay, I've had a question come in from Phil, who is one of my supporters at patreon.com slash billhilton. If you haven't seen my Patreon before, do check it out because there's loads of great stuff on there. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a moment. Anyway, Phil wants to know about syncopation, about how it works, how you can get better at syncopating and things like that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, there is a ton of confusion around the subject of syncopation. People tend to think it's kind of exclusively something you do with jazz or blues, yeah? So if I play a little bit of blues... Yeah, that right hand melody is syncopated. It has that kind of swinging offbeat feel that we associate with jazz or blues syncopation. Yeah, we've got long short, long short, long short, long short, which you sometimes see scored in a very approximate way using this kind of notation or maybe this kind of notation. Yeah, and people think that is syncopation, but actually there's much more to it than that. There are many other forms of syncopation, often quite subtly different from one another. And syncopation turns up in much more music than just jazz and blues okay so to give an example from a while back Beethoven absolutely loves syncopation right now I'm learning the piano part from his fourth violin sonata to accompany a friend of mine and it's full of syncopation it's in 6-8 time syncopate syncopate yes yeah, so syncopation crops up anywhere basically it's what happens when rhythmic stress falls away from what we might think of as a straight stress pattern. So if you have a straight sort of one, two, three, four, or, or a six beat or a two beat, if you're in a different time signature or whatever, if you have some sort of stress, usually rhythmic, not always, but usually rhythmic that falls away from that pattern, then that is syncopation. Now, most of you guys who are watching this are gonna be interested in syncopation for the purposes of playing jazz and blues, yeah? You might be going through my um, series of YouTube tutorials on jazz piano for beginners, for example. Now, what I hear a lot of from people who are going through that series is, you know, hey, Bill, I'm really struggling to syncopate my right hand. I can kind of improvise the notes. I can find the notes that I need to play, particularly if I'm playing the blues scale. But I really struggle with that do ba da ba dum ba dum ba da ba that kind of syncopated um, syncopated approach. Now, usually the thing that those guys are doing wrong is not, nothing to do with what they're actually doing on the keyboard. It's the way they're counting in their heads, yeah? Now, when you're playing jazz and blues, most of which is in 4-4 four, four time, typically the stress pattern in your 4-4 four, four beat falls on the off beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. But that's the opposite of what happens in the majority of what we might think of as straight music. So most rock and pop, most classical music and so on, it has a stress on the on beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Stress tends to be slightly stronger on the on beat one than on beat three, but that's where the stress is in most straight music. So often what is happening is that people are counting four in their heads, but they're counting it stressed in quite a straight way. Yeah. If you can get into the habit of counting the stress on the offbeat, you should find that syncopation gets a lot easier. Now, the best way to do that is to start counting one, two, three, four, stressing the offbeat and hitting your thigh on the offbeat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, and when you're comfortable doing that, you can start playing in the right. Yeah, and that offbeat stress should help you to syncopate more naturally. If you're finding that difficult to start with, then literally don't play at all, just clap, just practice counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or clap along to some jazz or blues, yeah? Just clapping the underlying beat with the stress on beats two and four. And you should find that that makes syncopating come not immediately to you, but much more naturally and much more easily. Now you can syncopate in many more ways than just playing that kind of typical long short, 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 and so on. Syncopation is all about just putting stress in slightly unexpected places, or at least unexpected to where where you would expect them to be if you were playing the music very straight. And there are lots of different ways of doing that. You can use volume type stress, so you can hit notes harder, or very commonly you can move notes slightly off the beat. Okay, let me show you what I mean. By that let's start off by playing a really straight melody let's go back to uh, our friend mr beethoven
okay that's about as straight as a melody gets now let me kind of jazz it up a bit Let, let's try a syncopated version of that melody <laughs> In that second version, what I was doing was just pulling around the position of the notes. So several of them were kind of sitting slightly off the beat and kind of slightly repositioned and stressed in different ways. And often I was hitting one different ones harder. Yeah, I'm really playing about with the uh, the timing, the rhythm, the length of the notes, and and the the actual volume stress that you know the the intensity with which I'm hitting the notes. So if you want to syncopate more naturally and easily, what do you do in practical terms? Well, the first thing to say is that syncopation isn't something you want to be working out with a calculator, okay? You don't want to be sitting at the piano saying, right, I'm going to play that note long and that one short, I'm going to bring that one in ahead of the beat. It's something that you have to feel rather than think, okay? You have to switch off the targeting computer and use the force, yeah? The syncopation has to get under your skin for it to work effectively. So now let's look at some tactics that you can use to start making that happen before we do like i said please do check out my patreon crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com slash bill hilton it doesn't cost very much to sign up and support me and you get some fantastic benefits you get free access to my piano packs you get uh, priority support from me personally you get loads of other free bits and pieces and this year 2022 i'm starting to do loads more exclusive stuff for my patreon supporters okay so head over to patreon.com slash bill hilton and check out what's on offer as soon as you've finished watching this tutorial. So I've got three tactics for you that will help you improve your own syncopation skills. Tactic number one is to clap syncopated rhythms that you hear anywhere. Yeah, you can do this away from the piano, you can do this on the train, you can do this in the shower, whatever. Say you've heard or you can remember a piece of syncopated melody like this. Just get it in your head and try to clap out the rhythm. Okay. Listen again. If you do that a lot, make a habit of doing it every day for a few weeks with random bits of music that you might hear, it will help you to get a feel for how syncopation works. Remember what I said, with syncopation, you've got to kind of get it under your skin. You can't calculate it, you have to get a feel for it. Tactic number two is exactly the same as tactic number one, but rather than just clapping, you're trying to work things out on the piano keyboard. So when you hear a syncopated melody, Yeah, try to work out the notes and try to copy it on the piano. As you do, notice how your hand movements are working. Often when you're playing in a syncopated style, things get more percussive. Yeah, I was kind of beating the piano there. And that kind of helps you put stress patterns in different places. You can even, you know, use a piece of sheet music if you want to. And... Um, you, you, you know, find transcriptions of jazz or whatever. But I think it's just as easy and probably actually better for you, again, to hear things, work out the notes, even if it takes a little bit of a trial and, trial and error, and then try and copy the syncopation and again, get a feel for it. Tactic number three is just to start creating your own improvisations by taking a straight melody and trying to give it a bit of a swing, okay? So it could be something really simple. Okay, what can I do to make that syncopated? Again, the offbeat will really help you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so start slapping your thigh on that offbeat and you should find that that helps. Again, try that with a variety of melodies, a variety of different things. Focus on playing in 4-4 four, four and 2-4 time for now. You don't want to complicate, too, complicate things too much with triple times, waltz times, although you can syncopate in those as well, as we saw from Beethoven earlier. Okay, so that's about it. I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you have, hit me up in the comments, ask me any questions, give this video a like, I'll be really glad to hear from you, and let me know how you get on. If you if you record any of your own syncopating, then post it somewhere and let me know. I always absolutely love to hear from people who do that. Remember to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok. <laughs> 
I'm on TikTok. All those links are below. And like I said, do please check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com slash Bill Hilton. There we go. Happy syncopating. I will see you next time.